take a moment and think about how complicated the task of text to video generation really is. To produce a coherent video, the neural network needs to understand the input prompt, know how the world works, how objects move across space, how physics happens, and then produce a sequence of frames that are both spatially, temporally, and logically sensible. Despite all of these challenges, today's diffusion neural networks are still getting quite good at it. In this episode of Neural Breakdown, we will learn how modern diffusion models generate video from text. Let's go. Before talking about text to video, it is critical to understand how text to image diffusion models work. I have an entire video dedicated to this very topic where I implemented a human face generator from scratch. So go check that out for a longer explanation. But here I'll do a one minute version of what diffusion is all about. You see, all image generation AI models have one goal, input random noise and a prompt and output an image conditioned on your input prompt. VAEs, GANs, and yes, diffusion as well, all basically employ different algorithms to achieve this same task. The key idea behind diffusion models is to use neural networks to gradually denoise the input noise over several time steps to ultimately produce a coherent, clear image. During training, we start with real images and progressively add noise to it in small steps. This is called forward diffusion. This generates a lot of samples of clear image and their slightly noisier variations. The neural network is basically trained to reverse this process at each time step by inputting these noisy images and predict how much noise to remove to retrieve the clearer version. So when generating new images, we input a fully noisy image and we repeatedly apply this denoising process and gradually reveal a clearer image. And what is even more fun is that we can make this entire denoising network condition on external signals like text as well. Conditional diffusion models allow us to guide the generation process towards specific outcomes using attention layers between your input text description and the noise removal process. Now, in theory, the same principles of image generation should extend to video generation as well, right? Because a video is just an image but with the added complexity of a temporal dimension. It might sound simple, but the task of video generation is quite complicated. It introduces way more challenges. For example, there's the challenge of maintaining the temporal consistency, ensuring that the objects and the background and all the motions, they all remain coherent as the video progresses. So even if you generate frames that are all great to look at, they also have to make sense as part of a sequence. Second, there's also a massive increase in computational demands. Models simply need to generate way more than just a single frame, around 12 to 16 frames for one second of video. Thirdly, with text to image models, we have easy access to large, high quality corpuses of paired image to text datasets, but there's a lack of such diversity and high quality video to text datasets. Because of the lack of high quality datasets, text to video cannot rely just on supervised training. And that is why, people usually also combine two more data sources to train video diffusion models. One, paired image text data, which is much more readily available. And two, unlabeled video data, which are extremely available and contains lots of information about how our world works. For example, one of the pioneer papers in this space is the video diffusion model paper from 2022 that introduced us to VDM. VDM is jointly trained on both image and video data. VDM replaces the 2D units from image diffusion models with 3D unit models. The video is input into the model as a time sequence of 2D frames. The 3D unit model consists of factorized spatiotemporal convolutional evolution layers. Okay, so that's a lot of words. Let me simplify each concept. Spatio, as you may have guessed, is short for spatial, referring to the processing of visual information within individual frames. Temporal refers to the processing across different frames in time, capturing the motion and changes between frames. Now, here's the catch. Processing all that 3D data using something like, say, a 3D convolution network is computationally very expensive. So they got clever. 
The term factorized basically means that the spatial and temporal layers are decoupled and processed separately from each other. This makes the computations much more efficient. Finally, what is UNIT? UNIT is a unique computer vision neural network that first downsamples the video or images through a series of these factorized spatiotemporal convolution layers, basically extracting the video features at different resolutions. Then there is an upsampling path that expands the lower dimensional features back Back to the shape of the original video. While upsampling, skip connections are also used to reuse the generated features during the downsampling path. In any convolutional network, always remember that the earlier layers capture detailed information about very local sections of the image, while latter layers pick up global, highly semantic patterns by accessing larger sections. So by using these skip connections, UNET combines the local details with global features to be like a super awesome network for feature learning and our denoising task. VDM was a cool proof of concept, but the resolution was too low to make the models useful in real world. Plus, VDM requires labeled video training data, which, as we have discussed before, are very rare. In 2022, Meta AI introduced the Make a Video model, and do you know what they did? They said, we don't even need video caption data at all. In the first phase, a basic text to image diffusion model, just like DALI or stable diffusion, is trained with just paired image to text data. In the next phase, however, unsupervised learning is done on unlabeled video datasets to teach the model temporal relationships, along with the 2D convolution that had already existed in the base image diffusion model to capture spatial features, the new 1D convolution layers and attention layers are introduced in the second phase to learn the sequential relationships between frames. These additional temporal layers are trained using a technique called mask spatiotemporal decoding, where the network learns to generate missing frames by processing the visible frames. At inference time, given an input text prompt, we first generate some keyframes using our image diffusion model. And then the spatiotemporal decoder interpolates between these visible frames by generating brand new frames in between. These images are very low resolution still with just 64 by 64 images and 16 frames. But then we use temporal super resolution models or TSR to insert more frames in between, followed by spatial super resolution modules or SSR to super scale to a higher resolution. And after all that expansion, the original 64 by 64 by 16 video gets converted to 256 by 256 videos with 76 frames. Google's Imagine Video uses a cascade of seven different modules that all work together to generate a video from text. The process starts with a base video generation model that creates a low resolution video clip. This is followed by a series of those SSR models and TSR models to basically upsample the spatial and temporal factors of this low resolution video. This cascaded approach allows Imagine Video to generate high quality, high resolution videos with some impressive temporal consistency. While models like Imagine and Make a Video are pretty impressive, the whole interpolation between frames and super scaling things can still make the video appear inauthentic and not very physics-y. Models like Nvidia's Video LDM tries to address this temporal inconsistency in a different way. They use something called as latent diffusion modeling. First, they train a latent diffusion image generator. Again, I have an entire video where I implement this thing from scratch, so go check that out for more details. The basic idea is to train a variational autoencoder or a VAE. The VAE consists of an encoder network that can compress input frames into a low dimensional latent space and another decoder network that can reconstruct it back to the original image from that latent space. The diffusion model is trained entirely in this low dimensional space, meaning the diffusion model outputs latent vectors which gets decoded to form the real image. This drastically reduces the computational complexity because we are basically trying to generate compressed versions instead of the full dimensional image. When producing videos, the image generator just normally produces individual frames as separate images. Of course, this will generate good images, but it will lack any temporal coherence because the network really has not yet been shown any video data yet. To address this, the decoder of the VAE is enhanced by adding new temporal layers in between its spatial layers. 
These temporal layers are fine-tuned on video data, making the VAE produce temporally consistent and flicker-free videos from the latents generated by the image diffusion model. Finally, we will talk about OpenAI's Sora. As of this recording, an official technical paper is not out yet, but we do have a lot of cool videos and a short blog article from OpenAI. Let's see the major architectural clues here. First up, Sora trains a video compression network that compresses the video both spatially and temporally. Remember in video LDM that we just discussed, the compression to latent space was only along the spatial axis, not the time axis. Recent papers like the COG Video X have used causal 3D VAE architectures where the entire video is simultaneously compressed along the spatial and the temporal axis. The COG Video X paper mentions that causal 3D VAEs reduces the computational complexity of the diffusion process because the model trains on videos of shorter sequence lengths and the aggregation of multiple frames together prevents flickering and inconsistencies in the generated video. The term causal in causal VAE also is important because it denotes that while compression, the convolution operations are masked such that no frame receives information from future frames in the sequence, basically preserving the causal nature of videos. But back to Soda, a transformer model is used as the main diffusion network instead of the more traditional choice of a unit model. Of course, transformers need the input data to be a set of tokens or a sequence of tokens. That's why the compressed video encodings we received is flattened into a sequence of patches. Observe that each patch along with its location in the sequence represents a spatio-temporal feature of the video. And then just like regular diffusion, noise is added to this patch sequence and then the diffusion transform is trained to denoise them. Transformer blocks for video diffusion models seem to be a very promising direction as shown by not only Sora but also papers like COG video and diffusion transformers that have come before Sora. Unit and convolution models are great because of their inductive bias about images. But if you have access to a really large scale dataset and you can throw a lot of compute at your models, history has taught us that the general power of a transformer can pretty much learn any data because of this generic attention framework. From multiple sources, it has also been claimed that OpenAI has indeed collected the most massive human annotated video text dataset to train Sora. The massive data, the huge compute investment, the generality of transformers and the representation power of latent modeling have all probably contributed to the making of Sora and the truly amazing and super impressive videos it's able to produce. I well, hope you enjoyed this video, it was not AI generated, it was human generated and I hope you learned something new. A huge thanks to our Patreon supporters, go check out our Patreon, you guys have been magnificent.